I am Perry Erickson. So here we are in the harbor of Amsterdam, and we're here to meet with designer Satyendra Pakale. His design comes from a culture dialogue mixed with new applications of materials and technologies. The design project has given him a worldwide reputation, not only uh, for his projects with leading design clients, but also for his limited edition pieces. Let's meet Satriandra and hear about his views on the design profession as an expression of the human optimism. If you were to explain for somebody that never saw you design, how would you explain your profile? Personally, for me, design is a, is a universal poetry. Uh, what I mean is uh, like good music, good food. Uh, any, it, could be, it could come from anywhere, but if it has really some resonance with the people and if it connects people at a very primal sensorial level, uh, people connect with it, enjoy it, associate it with and and I think that is uh, what I what I set out to do. If we look on your design process together mm -hmm. with the company, mm -hmm. uh, where does it start? So as, as a person who creates, you're always looking, observing, understanding, questioning. So if you like, that is already a process, you know, that's always happening. So you're always curious about things, you want to know what's happening in the world, you want to engage with the world, you want to know what are the new technologies, material possibilities. You also have a critical question on the life itself. So this is an ongoing continuous process, uh, whether you reflect on a historic past or you reflect on a contemporary scenario or one reflects on where the things might go. All of this is a, uh, in, in a sense a very, very organic, uh, I would say, uh, to be summed up in one word, curiosity, you know. And curiosity does not mean everything is cool and fine. No, curiosity means be critical, uh, ask fundamental questions, uh, and really try to find another way of, of another possibility, another scenario, hopefully mm -hmm. better, hopefully more sensorial, hopefully more human, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is a mindset, and that mindset creates a project, actually. Yeah, the designer nowadays uh, is not anymore uh, a uh, designer that just make pieces. Uh, I found that uh, the designer today is a culture shaper uh, with an active attitude to design. What's your take on that? Uh, I like the way you say culture shaper. Right from the beginning, um, this is, uh, has been a mindset very, very early on that uh, in a classical model that the designer is always asked by a so-called client, the world I don't quite appreciate, I would rather prefer to call a friend, to, uh, to create something on a brief. <clears throat> and what we said early on, and that's a studio practice here, is to, to really, if there is idea to do create something, we create that thing. And we created a setup in a studio whatever that condition could be. And if we want to respond, uh, we would respond. Uh, often design is misunderstood as a, a, just a visual appearance, aesthetic, so maybe a, a veneer, a surface, you know. Uh, in fact, design is a structural thinking tool, a strategic tool, if you like, you know. And, and slowly that debate is coming, but still for the wider world, it is still not understood in that way. And I think as a designer, we are engaged with on a very different scales, different level, different geographical conditions, at the same time, different sorts of technologies and typologies. Uh, I think it is very important to bring this kind of thinking, this kind of contribution to very many different uh, organizations, be it uh, industrial, corporate, manufacturing condition, be it a governmental organization, or maybe a cultural institution. Uh, Satriandra, mm -hmm. tell me, how did it all start? Why did you get interested in design in the first place? As a kid, we, when you need a toy, your mom doesn't take you to the toy store, but you go and find something, you make it, you go to the carpenter, you ask him to make something and so forth. What I do today probably is an is, is, is extension of the same mindset, probably. Perhaps with better tools, better knowledge, better accessibility and so on and so forth. 
So that has been, let's say, progressive continuity of what I was doing. Fortunate to be able to do that, you know, like you like to do something, you engage. So I've been making and I've been drawing since all along, and that's what I continue to do. So that would be, let's say, the, 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 the very from heart answer to the question. I, I imagine working with big clients uh, often have very complicated uh, processes. This thing, for instance, what is this? It looks very interesting. Can you... Yeah, this is uh, one of the recent projects we, we launched. It's a Kayo extensible table. It is uh, three meter long when it's extended and it's two, it goes from two to three meter. This extensible part, which is very easy to use, you, you simply pull it out, you turn around and then you, it gets locked. And there's just one knob. You just press a knob and then you turn around and it becomes two meter long, you know. The elegance of this actually to make the object eventually just, it just right, you know, that it just works with just simple touch. The knob comes out, you have this, you turn around and it works. So creating new ideas and new technology uh, inventions, uh, how do you as a designer go into that process? Yeah. Uh, I, I've always been curious about how things are made. So they are not just how things look. For me, design is how things are made, that they work, therefore they look what they look. So in case of a radiator, which is probably um, uh, one of the important projects we have undertaken and which has where I could take all the boxes of innovation, if you like to call, uh, in terms of um, how it works, why it does it, what it does in a, in a best possible way. But also it still remains uh, one of the most innovative products after all these years in, into production. Your studio is full of all the things. Uh, where do you find your inspiration in this? Actually, inspiration is a continuous curiosity. It is not one or the other thing. And the curiosity could be anything. This were the, the, the spoons made with the olive, olive um, tree wood yeah. in, in Ostuni, somewhere in the south of Italy. Just being on holiday there once to... There, there are really tons of things. There are natural stones from Sweden as well, from the coast. <laughs> so yeah. there are different kind of things. So it is not yeah. just one thing. There has always been a curiosity, but then how you translate that curiosity into a tangible real object that works. Mm -hmm. Is that what it is now? This is the electric version of the radiator. Yeah. So there is no inspiration that you do this and that thing comes. I think it's an overall curiosity. So uh, yeah, the, the, the objects are made into many different ways. They could be made into a, a simple clay model, then it's modeled into computer. They explore into different materials or there is a fascination for some process. So you have this uh, industrial extrusion machine part in aluminium, or there is a curiosity about certain mechanism like this piano uh, keyboard, how it works, you know. Yes, Satriande, you got loads of nice things here, interesting things here in your studio. But I must say, I've been looking at this all the time. Uh, what's going on here? What's this? <laughs> this, is, this is really, um, very articulately made object, object that uh, evokes a sense of future. It is object for life on the moon. Oh, what yeah. will be the life on the moon? This is a very a fascinating um, uh, project which is done on a, a basic observation that as we go in outer space, um, our angle of vision changes, you know. And just to experience that difference in angle of vision as we go from planet Earth in certain gravitational condition, so it's a hiking gauge for the moon. So if you like, uh, or the, 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 the idea is that I, I, I would say as a provocation, everybody should go to the moon once in a lifetime. Uh, here we are in the space on a ground floor where we have uh, what we call a playground. <laughs> Literally playground means a place to make things, means we can quickly make, realize the basic models, prototypes. Satriendra. Yeah. This piece is one of my favorites. Tell me the story about this one. This is really a long journey. We, um, I was always wanted to do a bigger piece in this artisanal process we started exploring. A seamless piece which is made with no joint, no soldering. Took a lot of time in terms of technical developments to make it. And this is a, what we call a BM horse which is a very uh, strong 
primal form which mm -hmm. led to really a host of let's say design language which is very archaic but yet very futuristic mm -hmm. uh, so this is a very seminal work in the body of our work actually yes it is yeah well here we have a workspace workspace where we make basic models and the basic model could be just a simple cardboard or even an elaborate one is to one piece like this where it's very articulately made later this will be scanned and then made into a three-dimensional model yeah, so Satriandra, now you're a world famous designer working with big companies all over the world. Where will you go from now? Well, I consider this is a beginning. I mean, if you really look at the world and you travel around, we travel around and you see still, if you look at the internet access to the people around the world, is a very small fraction of the entire population. So there's a long way to go. Uh, there has always been a concern about how to create a, a really a life a human condition on our planet and, and reach to as many wider audience and people as possible to touch their life uh, but in a very human and a, and, a, and a ecological and sustainable way. That has been a concern all along actually. Now how to scale that up and reach all these contexts is a lifelong uh, journey actually and a lifetime is not enough actually. So this is just the beginning of the beginning I would say. If you were to give a young person that wants to become a designer yeah. an advice, yeah. what would that be? Uh, find your way and walk your way and be persistent about it. That's all I would say. Mm -hmm.